Please remember that the complete information for the class that you are about to view is at elithecomputerguy.com. Not only do we have our videos there, but we have part lists, diagrams, pictures, and even complete code examples. So if you are watching this video and you want more information, please go to elithecomputerguy.com. Welcome back. As you know, I am Eli the Computer Guy, and in today's class, I'm going to be showing you how to parse a file name and a file path uh, using path info in PHP. So let's say uh, you have a file name and a file path, and you want to be able to interact with the information in that file name or file path for whatever your application needs to do. Let's say you need to know what the extension of a file is. So uh, let's say you're going to be uploading files onto a server and you want to say if the extension for the file is uh, JPEG, I want the people to be able to upload the file. If it's PDF, I want it to fail out. Well, with path info, what you can do is you can actually use path info to turn the file name and the file path into an array, and then you can test the individual components of that array. So you're able to test for the extension. So you can actually pull out just the extension, just .txt, just .pdf, just, just uh, uh, .jpeg or whatever else. You can pull out just the file name. So without the extension at all, you can just pull out the file name. You can pull out the folder that the uh, the file is stored in. You're able to pull out all of this individual information and then be able to interact with it in your PHP script. So the class I'm going to be uh, doing today is showing you how to use the path info function in PHP. Again, this is one of those little tools that can be very valuable for you at the end of the day. So honestly, there's nothing really cool or exciting with the demonstration and the code that I'm going to be showing you today. Basically, you would be using the path info function with the other projects and the other classes that we've done. So again, if you're going to be doing things such as uploading uh, files using an HTML form and a PHP script onto your web server, uh, then one of the things you can do is use that path info to do things such as change the name or modify the name of the file that is being saved. You can use it, again, in order to verify what the extension is. So basically, this is one of those functions where it's very valuable in the context of other projects when you're going to be doing file handling, but on its own, it's kind of a little boring. Uh, so let's go over. Uh, we'll take a quick look at the code, then I will show you what that code outputs, and I think at that point you'll understand why path info is so useful. So here we are at my Linux server. I'm using Ubuntu 18.04 LTS, S, the, with the uh, desktop, the graphical user interface. Uh, but for the demonstration that I'm showing you today, more or less any LAMP sh server should work fine for you. Uh, now with this, uh, all I've done is uh, first I've opened up the PHP script and then I've gone down and I've created a variable for file path. So dollar sign file path and I've assigned that value of file path to simply a file path path, a file name, and an extension. So basically here, I've just created this file path variable, period, forward slash folder, forward slash file dot txt. And so this is what we're going to be parsing today. So I'm hard coding this in here. The important thing to be thinking about though, is this variable could come from any number of sources. You could create a PHP script that's going to scan through uh, directories on your server. And that's how you could set this variable. Uh, again, you could be uploading files uh, using a uh, dollar sign underscore files, and that's where this variable could come from. So basically assigning the value to this variable could come from a number of different uh, places in a PHP script. I am simply hard coding this today just so we have a hard coded example for, for me to be able to show you what's going on. Now the next thing I've done is that I've created a variable called file path array. So essentially what we're going to be doing is we're going to be turning the value of file path into an array using this path info function. So the path info function function will then go and take a look at the value of file path and it will then turn the different components of that file of the the file name and the folder in the the file path into an array that we're able to interact with so basically file path array is simply going to be the value of file path turned into an array by path info. Then what we're going to do is we're going to come down here. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to use the var underscore dump function. So var underscore dump, this just simply 
it dumps out all of the information about a variable. So you can take a look at it. And what we're going to do there is we're simply going to dump out all of the information about file path array. So this is just simply going to spit all of that out onto the screen so we can see the keys, we can see the values for the keys, so on and so forth. Then past that, uh, what we're going to do is we're simply going to echo out the value for file path. So the original file path here. So that's going to be the full file path. We're going to do a break then the next thing we're going to do is the file path array but then we're simply going to print out the directory name so basically just the folder name then we're going to do a break we're going to do file path array then we're going to do the base name so we talk about the base name that's the full name of the file so file.txt is the base name this is the entire thing that will come out then if we come down here, we do file path array file name. So just file name, all file name is going to be is file. And so this is one of the interesting things. Again, if you're going to be uploading, let's say, pictures to your web application, what you could do is you could have uh, a script go through, basically pull out the file name for the picture without the extension, and then basically set that as the name that is viewable to your users that go to your gallery. So if you named uh, all of your pictures, you know, a pretty sunset dot uh, JPEG, you know, a mountain dot JPEG, you know, whatever, a water scene dot JPEG, what you could do is when somebody uploads the image into your gallery application it could simply pull out that file name and set the the value of whatever the title is for that image to whatever the file name is so that's one of the types of things that you can do uh, and then the final thing you can do down here is file path array uh, extension so basically this is where we can simply pull out the extension dot pdf dot jpeg dot whatever else you can test against it so on and so forth so that's really all there, all there is to this particular script uh, the first thing that we're going to need is we're going to need a file path and a file name. Uh, we assign that to the value of a variable. We then turn that variable using path info into an array. And then once we've turned it into an array, we can then interact with the dir name, so the directory name. This will be the directory name. The base name, the base name is the name plus the extension. The file name is just the file name and the extension is just the extension. With that, we can go over and we can take a look and see what the results are. So when I pull this script up with my web browser over at my demonstration uh, computer, we can see what the results are. So again, um, I have my web server sitting at 10.0.1.37, and this script that I created is pathinfo.php, and we can go down and we can take a look at the results. Uh, so the first thing is the var underscore dump. So when you ever use var underscore dump, again, that can dump all of the information about a variable. So if, if you get confused about what a variable is, what the keys are, if it's an array, if not, you can simply use var dump. So we're simply doing a var dump. It's telling us it's an array uh, value. Uh, we have directory name, uh, and that's folder. Base name uh, equals file.txt, extension equals txt, and file name equals file. So basically, we can sit here and we can see that this is an array. We can see what the, the keys are in the array, and then we can see what the values are for those keys. Uh, past that, this is where we simply printed out a dollar sign file path. So just the original file path. This is what we printed out here. Uh, then we go down to the next line. This is the file path array uh, dir name. So again, the directory name. That's what we have uh, being printed out here. We go down to the next line. This is the file path array base name. So again, the base name is file.txt here. Then we go down to the next line, file path array file name. So file name is simply file. That's what we have printed out here. And then finally, file path uh, array extension. So again, we have that extension is .txt, and that is what gets printed out here. So it's important to understand that you're able to assign these values to an array and then once you've assigned the values to an array, you can interact with those values just like you would with any other values in a PHP script. You can assign those value, values to other variables. You can test against the, those values. Again, once you have values, then you can actually start interacting with them in the PHP script. And that's really all there is to path info.
So there you go. Now you know how to use the path info function in PHP. So this allows you uh, to parse the file path or the file name, uh, be able to pull out what folder the file is in, be able to pull out the specific name of the file, be able to pull out the base name, so the file with the extension, or just simply be able to pull out the extension. Obviously, if, you, if you've been messing around with any scripts that interact with uh, files, this is a type of thing that can be very useful for you. So again, you can test uh, based on the extension so I only want PDF files to be able to be uploaded into my web application. If the file is anything other than PDF, you just fail it out. Or you can sit there and you can say you want certain types of image files. So .jpeg, .jpg, <clears throat> those types of things to be able to upload. <clears throat> If, that ha if you have the proper extension, then you can. If not, you fail. Uh, you can also do other things, such again, being able to pull out that file name. So imagine if you're uploading uh, files into your web application and you just want a simple default name uh, for what's getting loaded into the application. So you can simply pull out that file name and then the title, whatever your user is going to see, whatever name the user is going to see, can simply be that file name. So if it's images, right, so, you know, a pretty simple sunset.jpeg, a pretty sunset gets pulled out, uh, and then that is now the title of an image. Or again, if you're thinking about things like accounting or maybe business forms, somebody's going to be uploading uh, the, uh, the profit loss statement for October for your company. So basically when they upload that PDF form into your web application, you can simply pull out that file name, you know, profit loss statement for, for October, and that can become the name uh, that your users see when they go to enter interact with that PDF uh, when it's in your web application. So again, this is one of those simple, simple little tools in the PDF world that if you're de dealing with files can be very valuable for you. As always, go, go play with it, go play, muck around, see what you can do. Um, and I think you'll be pretty impressed with it. So with that, as always, I enjoy doing this class and look forward to seeing you the next one. If you like the content that I create, please think about going to elinethecomputerguy.com and becoming a member or donating. Please understand that all the educational videos are in front of the paywall. That includes the videos, that includes the notes, the diagrams, and the code example. All of that is freely available and in front of the paywall. But if you want to watch opinion videos or if you want to be able to comment, you do need to become a member. Membership is $5 a month or $60 a year and gives you access to those opinion videos and the ability uh, to comment. If you don't want to become a member, you just want to give a one-time uh, donation, there is also a donate button where you can do that. Please understand, in order to provide the education that I am, it does cost money. The servers cost money, equipment costs money, travel costs money. All of these things cost a reasonable amount of money. And the fact of the matter is, is YouTube's advertising program no longer supports creators the way that it used to. So if you want to these classes to continue to stick around and you find them to be valuable, please think about either becoming a monthly member or donating a few dollars for this project.